Now, we look at the case of Jane Harrison, who one day in 1995 just disappeared. Her family were insistent from the start that she would never have left her children. And they were certain she'd come to harm. That's despite her body never having been found. But it would take 18 years and groundbreaking advances in mobile phone forensics to finally prove who her killer was. When I knew Jane had come home, I knew I'd never see her again. I, I knew he killed her. It's been 20 years, and it's just horrendous. No one should have to suffer like this. When mother of two, Jane Harrison, disappeared in 1995, her family and the police were convinced she had been killed. But to this day, her body has never been found. Jane was a, a, a devoted mother. She was an, a wonderful sister and she was a, a beautiful daughter. Growing up, we was constantly together. I mean, people was everywhere I was, Jane was, and vice versa. Jane's partner had long been a cause of concern for her family. Kevin Doherty had been in a relationship with Jane for three years. The couple had a one-year-old son, Taylor. Mum. 14-year-old Ryan, Jane's first child, also lived at their flat in Islington in North London. But this was not the only place Doherty called home. He was leading a double life was married. He had this family unit in Woodford. Um, he had a, a job. Um, but then in Islington, he seemed to have this other life with Jane and the two boys. Jane often fell victim to Doherty's temper. The first of it was the controlling, then the violence started, and I'd see her, you know, and she'd be hiding bruises and so on but she hid a lot from us until it was pretty obvious that something was going drastically wrong. There were occasions when Jane had to call the police to the address for incidents that had happened at home, um, and certainly Ryan, her eldest son, had witnessed incidents of domestic violence. Get her, bury you in Epping Forest. He even threatened to kill her. I'll never find you. I know it's all last minute, but he's taken us away as a family. However, on the day she vanished, Jane was feeling optimistic about the future. Look, everything's going to be OK. I received a call from Jane. She was quite excited. She said that um, uh, her and Kevin had been having problems and um, he's been man and they're trying to make another go of it for the children's sake. And he's booked a holiday for him to go to Florida. And she said to me, but this is really a make or break there. So she was quite happy. She was busy. She was packing. But that afternoon, the couple was seen arguing near Jane's flat. Later, they went to Wood Green Shopping Centre, where they took this snap in a photo kiosk. The pair were also caught on CCTV the last known sighting of Jane. Jane's teenage son, Ryan, came home at about 8 p.m. Where's Mum? I dropped at your nance. Ryan said that Kevin seemed quite agitated that evening, and he persuaded Ryan to go to his girlfriend's house, which was quite out of character for Kevin to do that. After giving him a lift, Doherty returned home and collected Taylor from the nearby babysitter. When the neighbour was in the flat, there was a telephone call. Really appreciate and Kevin told the neighbour that it was Jane on the phone. And after Ryan came home from his girlfriend's, there was another phone call. Just dropped the boy off. Kevin said that she was on her way home. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're... But soon, he was calling Jane's sister, Maxine, to raise the alarm. 
go ask them, ask them. The minute he said she hasn't come home, that she was out drinking with her friends, I knew from that moment on I would never see my sister again. Convinced that Jane had come to harm, her family pressurised Doherty to go to the police. Kevin reported um, Jane missing in June 1995. Um, obviously, there were some concerns for her well-being. Let's report missing persons. We knew that she was um, a loving mother who wouldn't leave her children. Um, she was very close to her family. There was no reason for her to go missing. Her complexion. The information Doherty gave contained some worrying inaccuracies. He described her as being pale. Jane had quite olive-coloured skin and, and dark brown hair, and he said that she had blue eyes, that she had more of a greeny-coloured eye. And when questioned further, his account of the day Jane went missing didn't tally with CCTV or other people's timings. Honestly, I can't Officers wait. also looked at the holiday to Florida he had booked and discovered it hadn't been paid for. Had he known they'd never go? With the domestic uh, abuse background, he was a suspect. Doherty was arrested on suspicion of abduction. I think it became clear to the original investigation team that they were dealing with a murder. Everything seemed to point to Kevin, but what we didn't have is any substantial evidence. Without having a body or any firm sightings of Jane, there was just never enough evidence to take it that one step further. Frustratingly, the investigation had stalled. Jane's family continued to try everything to find the truth. I don't care what anyone says. It doesn't matter that Jane was 32. That's still my mum's little girl. Maxine even turned to psychics in the hope of locating Jane. Without success. But in 2010, 15 years after Jane's disappearance, police re-examined the case. Doherty's mobile phone was to become the key to exposing his lies. Back in 1995, it was very new how we used phone evidence, how we interpreted that phone evidence. 15 years on, we'd gained a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge. Cell site analysis allows police to pinpoint where a phone call is made. It can even identify a phone's location when it isn't being used. We were able to prove that a lot of the timings that Kevin had given us in the original investigation were actually wrong. Kevin actually said that he was in the Hoxton area um, looking for Jane when actually the phone evidence suggested otherwise. Doherty also claimed Jane had called the landline twice on the evening she disappeared. But the phone records told a different story. The two phone calls that had been made into Jane's flat that night had actually both come from Kevin's mobile phone. He actively went out of his way to give accounts that he knew were not true so, so that he could prove that he was not the last person to see Jane alive. Police finally had enough evidence to charge Doherty, even without Jane's body. They have gone to Wood Green, to the shopping centre there. I didn't even say that. They've come out of there, some argument has taken place. Things have got out of hand, and I think that is when Kevin has then killed Jane. Kevin has taken one of the windows of opportunities he's had that night to dispose of Jane in probably one of the many lockups that he, he was responsible for. He's then gone back to the home and then given reasons to actually go back out, and this is potentially where he could have disposed of Jane's body. In 2013, a jury concluded Kevin Doherty unlawfully killed Jane Harrison and disposed of her body. He was convicted of manslaughter and jailed for 12 years. But for Jane's family, the story is far from over. It's just horrendous. It makes me feel sick to my stomach, the fact that he 
He knows he could put us out of our misery. Every day for 20 years, it's been pain of not knowing and wondering. That's not how your life's meant to end. You're not meant to be disposed of. No one knows where you are. You're meant to be put to rest, peace. We'll have peace then. It destroys you inside. It takes every bit of you out of you. And we just pray that we do find her. Well, her killer may be behind bars, but the search for Jane's body continues. And indeed, there's a £10,000 reward for information that will lead to her discovery. That will allow her family to finally lay her to rest. Full details, including images of the car that Doherty was using at the time, are on our website. Please do call the studio now if you can help. Or, of course, you can speak anonymously to Crime Stoppers, and they're on 0800 555 triple one. Just time now for a final check on your calls with Jason. <laughs>